Hi! Today we're going to learn about bivariate distributions in statistics. So before we even get started with this, let's, know, let's talk about what we know. So we know something called univariate distributions. So in univariate distributions, we have one variable. So I know what you guys might be thinking. There are two types of variables in univariate distributions. There are categorical variables and quantitative variables. But the thing, but the thing is, in one distribution, there's, in one particular distribution, there's only one variable. So in, let's say, a distribution about your age, you would have only quantitative, or, yes, only quantitative variables. But in a distribution about the types of cars, in a parking lot, you would have only categorical variables. So that's what a univariate distribution is. And to show that, we use box plots, histograms, and more. So, try and take a guess and see if you can find out what bivariate distributions are. So just from the name itself, you can probably think that bivariate distributions are distributions with two variables. So what are these two variables? Well, the two variables are, we have an explanatory variable, explanatory variable, and then we have a response variable. So you'll notice that I put x and y next to these. So the explanatory variable on a graph is displayed on the x-axis, and the response variable would be displayed on the y-axis. So let's think about how we can use which axis they're displayed on to figure out the definitions of explanatory and response variables. So we know that in general, the variables that go on, or the variable that goes on the x-axis is the independent variable, and the one on the y-axis is the dependent variable. So what that means is the explanatory variable probably is the thing that tells, or the probably is the thing that explains how we got to the response variable. So the response is dependent upon what the explanatory variables what the explanatory variable is. So that doesn't make very much sense here when we're talking definitions. So let's see it on a graph. So we have the two axes, x and y. And I'm not going to label them because you know that this is the x-axis and this would be the y-axis. So let's think up of a situation where we have two different variables, but they're related. So let's pick height and arm span. So let's just say that the height of a person tells us, or the height of the person, so let's just say that the, the arm span of the person depends upon the height of the person. So as you get taller, your arms probably grow longer, or your arm span increases, probably. So what depends on what? Well, your arm span probably depends on your height and not the other way around. So that means that we should put the height, let's say the, uh, the units are feet or inches. The height in inches over here on our x-axis as the explanatory variable. And then let's put on the y-axis as our response variable, arm span. in inches. Whoops, that was bad. It's the arm span in inches. I am. So, the graph probably looks something like this. Make bigger dots. So, as your height increases, so does the arm span. And one other, one other thing to remember is that in statistics, this distribution isn't always going to be a function in the way that we can have two different, two different response variables or two different y-coordinates y coordinates for the same x-coordinate. So somebody could be 79 inches and have an arm span of about 70 inches or 78 inches and somebody could be 79 inches and have an arm span of about 
80 inches. And that'd be really tall and really long arms. So, we know that in general, your arm span and your height basically stay at a one to one ratio. So, as you grow, so your arm span usually is the same or as close to the same as your height. There will be some outliers. So, some people who are really tall but have shorter arms. Or some people who are really short, but have longer arms. So those would be outliers. So once again, to recap this part, in bivariate distributions, we have two variables, explanatory variables and response variables. And both of these are present in one bivariate distribution. So the response variable depends on the explanatory variable. So basically, the response variable, which goes on the y-axis, is the dependent variable, and the explanatory variable, which goes on the x-axis, is the independent variable. So take a moment to go over this in your head. If you have any questions, you can leave them in the comments. So now we have to go over what we need to think about when we're describing bivariate distributions. So when describing univariate distributions, we know that we have to talk about the form, or we have to talk about, sorry, the shape, the spread, the center, the best measure of center, and the outliers. So what do we have to think about, or what do we have to talk about when we're, de when we're describing bivariate distributions? Well, we have to describe three things. We have to describe the direction, the strength, and the form. So the direction is simple. It's just positive or negative. So if the graph is going up like this, it's positive. Or if the graph was going downward, if the trend was going downwards like this, it'd be negative. So plus and minus. So let's just put that down here. We have positive, plus, or negative, minus. Now let's talk about the strength. So what the strength means is we can have a distribution like this where it follows, it's, it follows the one trend really closely or somewhat closely. So this isn't exactly super close. A super close trend would look something like this. However, it's not super spread out either. So a trend that was super spread out might look something like this. So we see that there's a general trend going upwards, but there's not really that much of a correlation. So the strength basically tells us how well it fits a trend. So both of these can be described with something called the correlation coefficient, which is r. r is just what the correlation coefficient is. So r is equal to the correlation coefficient, let's just say cc for short. But the thing is, the correlation coefficient is only there, or it's only applicable, when we have a linear graph, or a linear trend. So what are these trends called? And how do we know when we have to use the correlation coefficient or not? Well, that's, that's where we get to the third thing here, form. So basically, the form just says, do we have a linear trend, or is it nonlinear? So we can figure this out by looking at something called a residual plot. And that is in a different video called Residuals and Residual Plots. So, the three things to remember to talk about when describing bivariate distributions and statistics are direction, strength, and form. Also, we have to remember that we have two variables present in one distribution, and they are the explanatory variable and the response variable. Today, we learned about bivariate distributions in statistics. Thank you for watching this video.